All right, today I got this walk-in cooler. Uh, it's a dairy cooler, it looks like. And they are reporting that on the 13th, which today is the 20th, so seven days ago, uh, they reported it to be up in the 40s. Actually, FMOC, the company that monitors these, uh, made that service call. Right now, the temperature gauge, the thermometer outside the door is showing about 41 and a half, 42. So let's go up here on the roof and check it out. I believe these are my condensers. Let's see which one says D. I believe it's that one. Yeah, D01, there we go. So on D01, we've got side glass that's flashing. That's not good. So inside here, my evaporator again, so I need some space to work. I'm gonna take this little thing off here and pop off the sides. And well, you can definitely tell that, uh, that it's low on the refrigerant and you can hear the liquid, I don't know if you can hear it on the camera, but I can hear the liquid and the vapor kind of surging through the valve here. Might have a leak. Hell yeah, yeah, yeah. Might have a leak right here. Looks like on that liquid line. Coming into the dryer. Got some oil. Got oil. And that right there is oil, my friends. oil now I wanted to show y'all a trick and you see I got my gauge on the suction side okay I'm gonna kill power and I'm going to disconnect my compressor contactor disconnect both contactors actually it doesn't really matter um, because I wanted to show y'all why it's important to un disconnect the compressor contactor before you shut the switch off in there because you're going to have a higher pressure on the suction side and it's going to be easier to find a leak with a higher pressure than it would be to have find a leak with a lower pressure after a pump down. Okay, believe I have found it. Look at there. Look at that. That little mother... Hmm. Let's get a better look at this. Oh, my. oh man, what do I got one here too? You're trying to tell me I got more than one? Hmm. That one right there. What about anywhere else? Don't know. It could. It's possible. This thing's old. That's what happens when you got old stuff. I think that's the only one. What y'all think? Think it's the only one? Guess we'll find out in a little bit, huh? When I pressurize it after I repair it. Mm. Okay, so that gets repaired. It's hard to spot too, man. That little a little bastard. Look at that, man. It doesn't even sometimes. Sometimes the the leak detector doesn't even doesn't even get it, dude. Like like 
really, man. That's, that's a sneaky little prick. Hmm. Yep, sneaky. Dang, that bubble's getting big, y'all. Look at that. <laughs> All right, now. So I gotta get stuff to uh, get this fixed. Till then, I need to turn it back on, let it run some, cause we've got a lot of food in here. So go back on the roof, open the system back up, reconnect the contactor, turn the system back on. Y'all wanna know why that sneaky leak was easy to find? Because we got 70 PSI on the suction side of the system instead of 10. All right, so plug my contactor back in. And okay. That's open. Okay. There we go. System's back on. So up on the roof, on the condenser, this is the discharge line. I wasn't able to get it on video, but this is terrible. I gotta do something about that. So I'm gonna go get some parts and refrigerant. Uh, I need to get a couple jugs, and I'm gonna get some copper to repair that discharge line, and I'll be back. All right, now that I'm back, I got all my stuff loaded up here in the basket. The torches, got everything I need. I'm gonna get started. pressure out of the line I got this manual valve over here turned off wherever the hell is that in the camera I think somebody has already gotten this too hot before and made a hole in it. That's what it looks like. I don't want to push push the limits too much. So I'm just gonna lightly get that oh yep. Kind of just like that. Make it nice and thick right where I think that little hole is. Okay, that's good. Might not be the prettiest, but she'll hold. Well, what do you know? I actually have a CO84S. So it is a very nice coincidence that I happen to have the exact same dryer. somebody when putting this together used a 3 8 coupling to make it wider this is actually the right fitting to use right there it's a field reducer I think half inch right here see and then 3 8 right there it actually fits perfect What you do when that happens is you just put something, you figure out a way to make it get pushed up and stay pushed up. So I can put a tool under it. I don't know if y'all can see that. There. Put a tool under it like that. Leverage. That's going to do it right there. 
Get all my stuff rigged up to the roof because I replaced this dryer and made uh, a new solder, new seal, formed a new seal on that leak that we found earlier up there. All right, so whenever one of your caps is too tight and you have to use a backup or it's gonna twist the copper off, you put your backup on there. And then you put your primary wrench and then you put pressure you, you, you gotta to do this right you gotta squeeze like that to keep pressure off of the joint so like that also on these king valve style things when these are really tight like that and say you know you can't loosen it you have to loosen the backup nut first and most of the time it's going to be tight and that's preventing your stud or whatever from being able to move. Go back and forth with it like that, and it weakens the, the little bit that's left over. See? All right, so I got 5 8 pipe, a 5 8 coupling, and a 5 and 8 field reducer to a uh, half inch. 5 8 45 with some pipe, a 5 8 elbow, and I got to go down onto this. That's a brass fitting there, so I think I'm going to need my orange coated flux. This is the orange solder. It's like seven or eight dollars a stick. Flux coated silver. Then, after you pull the deep vacuum on it, 
I barely got like a little bit left. Wow. You look for leak. I might have a leak anywhere, it's gonna be here. That's awesome. No leak. I think so. Nah. This biatch is about to start. Got the disconnect on. We are ready to turn the switch on in the cooler. The cooler. Okay, time to add some, some juice to it. It's gonna take a little while. Got a receiver down there. Check out what happens to the amp draws when we add liquid to it. All right, see, we're at like a 5.8 right now. Somewhere around there, liquid. It starts working harder now. That's cool, huh? Turn that liquid off, it starts going back down. This charge is starting to go up a little, that's good. Damn, the whole amp, it's crazy. Give it a chance to, to catch up. Let's breathe a minute, hot, poor thing. Oh my god, put that thing through hell. Our cooler's starting to cool back down a little bit. Maybe we're going to set it now. Mm. The pressure's starting to sweat on the suction side. Yep. After a while, once you get some refrigerant in it and you've got enough vapor returning, it kind of mixes up in there enough with the liquid to make it not hurt the compressor so bad than just dumping liquid in it like this uh, when it doesn't have much refrigerant. Mm, now the condenser temperature's starting to warm up like it needs to be. That's good. It's real good. Now we've got better pressure. Look at that. Side like glass. All right, so I'm gonna uh, start putting everything up, getting all my stuff out to the truck, finish charging it. My phone's about dead. This one over here, it's like, man, it's like dead. It's got 8%, and the phone I'm using right now, it's got like 12%. So for the final recap, we fixed the leak in the evaporator, which is actually down there. It's like underneath us right now. Uh, but then we also replaced this discharge line because we saw how how freaking horrible it was. Who's it at? Right here. Look at this. So, we stopped a, a future leak today. We would, this would have turned into a leak. This, this was bad. So we did that. We leak checked everything. We replaced the dryer. And we're good. Charging it back up now. It's nighttime almost. Been here all day. All right. Well, thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate it. Later.